Are uh, actually going to be visiting right now. Yes, yes. For almost a week. Almost a week. Anyway, from the Village de France. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I'm sorry. So that was. As did you. From France. I H S. Just from France. Just from France. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there was a small piece of information. Okay. Well, it's a great pleasure to have him speak about. Final path integrals, a joint work with Cecil David Moret. And, uh, uh, well, I'll make it short. Okay. Okay, so, this is propaganda for our book, mm -hmm. which appeared a few years ago Functional Integration, Action, and Symmetries, which give you uh, the, the flavor. The flavor. So, I mean, Feynman path integral is. Uh, mm -hmm. Very difficult subject for a mathematician. Of course, for a physicist, it's a well accepted device and very useful. But uh, it's known since the very beginning that there are mathematical difficulties. And uh, I certainly don't, don't claim, together with Cecil in our book, that we have, sought, we have given the final solution. Final solution is always a dubious concept. But at least we have tried to make it workable, and we, our point of view was what we call a semi-axiomatic point of view, which means that we try to describe very as accurately as possible what is permitted to do, what are the tools, what are the formulas, and so on, the concept. But we don't pretend that we have a, a complete rigor, but I can have you that the notion of rigor is quite relative, quite relative. Let's say, I will take my comparison with the 18th century. I'm very familiar with the work of Euler, and I, I like it very much. And very often people complain that uh, the work of Euler is not rigorous because he, he considered divergent series, and he has no explicit definition of what it means, convergent or, or uh, continuous. But when you see that he's able to calculate sum of 1 over n squared with six digits, <laughs> and it's a very, very slowly convergent series, mm -hmm. as we know, is able to calculate it with six digits, you have a good sense of what is a convergent series, <laughs> obviously. And uh, in some work, I mean, he was dealing with the harmonic series, sum of 1 over n, and he knows very well that it's, a, it's, a, it's not finite, and he uses a del 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 simple delta to manipulate that. But I look very carefully to his calculations, they are all correct. Because he knew very explicitly that he, he could do linear combination. Well, it's easy to justify afterwards, but not <coughs> multiply delta by itself. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. <coughs> so, uh, I think we are at the moment in the following position. <coughs> in, in the 18th century, people knew the rules of calculus. They were doing explicit and fantastic calculation, but they did not have. They had some integral, some derivation, but they did not know the extent of the functional space to which this applies. So they did not know, the, well, they knew that in the middle they were in the safe place. Mm -hmm. But if you approach the border, if you approach the border, you can get into difficulty. But they stayed, they stayed away, and even if they not, did not have, well, of course, you will never find well, the definition of a space which is integrable under such a process. But that, and it, it, to me, it seems that we are in the same situation for Feynman Pass integral. We, we, can, we can use them in a, in a safe place and don't go too far to the border, to the borderline. Uh, it's uh, uh, Andre Ray mentioned that uh, he has this idea of what is what is axiomatic. Well, it, it was for not it was a secret confession to me. <laughs> that he would not do it in public. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, uh, Rigor is like, he was in Chicago at the time, a big parking lot in Chicago. <laughs> we know the area is not so safe, <laughs> but there is a big pole, big light, you put your car just below, <laughs> you have little chance to be wrong. <laughs> but if you go to the, to the, to, to the sides, while there is shadows and so on, while you are in the danger to be home. But you know in science, what is interesting is to go to the border, <laughs> not to stay under the big light. <laughs> okay. And for him, axiomatic was a big light. And one very similar comment. So, I will speak. And first of all, uh, 
זה רז. There was a fairy tale in Princeton in the, in the 40s. And I will just give you some names. First of all, there was Wheeler, John Wheeler, who was professor at Princeton. And uh, he had the good luck to hire Feynman as a PhD. Feynman was a difficulty. He has not been accepted in, in, the, in the Columbia. Mm -hmm. They were quotas against Jews. He was with some difficulty accepted at MIT for undergraduate study, and he moved with Wheeler. And there is a story that uh, some, sometime in 42, uh, many people left to Los Alamos, and that the man, I mean, when Feynman brought his suitcase to the station of Princeton, the man who was there told him, what, I don't understand. You have many friends who go to this very deserved place called Los Alamos. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope there was no Nazi spy. <laughs> it was <laughs> okay. So and uh, so Feynman, of course, Feynman. And why did he has explained about his life uh, so often that I don't have to repeat it? And uh, but another character was Dyson. And it will come in my description. What is it come in my description? Mathematical description. Dyson was a British, and he's still very British. <laughs> His father was a organ player, organ player in some church, some parish. He was a composer. Oh, he was a composer, and oh, he was a head of the biggest. Okay, so better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, but probably also plays organ. In the Maybe, uh, I mean, I've heard only. Uh, Choral music, right? <laughs> okay, and, and, and there was, there is a letter from Dyson to his family where he refers to the, to the, to the new visit, French visitor with Cecil Lewis. Okay, so all these people came very well together, and uh, I don't, of course, it's from Cecil, but I don't know any of the story, but it's for lunch time. So now let's begin. Uh, what has what in the beginning? What so beginnings? Two n. Beginning. So the first, the beginning is Dirac in 1928, just after the breakthrough by Eisenberg, and uh, when it was recognized that uh, there were matrices and so on. And the breakthrough of Dyson of Dirac was to recognize that the commutation law, PQ minus QP is minus by H bar, resembled the fact that for the Poisson bracket, PQ is 1, or minus 1, depending on your convention. So, and he said, well, it looks similar. And uh, he said that uh, in some, in some uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I mean, uh, he said, well, this reminds me of uh, something called a Poisson bracket. But the library was closed. He had to wait the next day to look at some textbook of you know, classical mechanics and recognize immediately. So the point is that there is more or less, and uh, it should be better to write it uh, as I over H bar P2 plus 2P is 1. For a while, it was supposed that you can just mechanically replace in classical formulas of Poisson market by this commutator. It's known that it's contradictory because it's true, it's true at the first order in H bar, but not at the second order. And that has been the BTB. So, okay, and that's what, so it, it, gave a com, it gave some method to do the quantization. That means going from a mechanical, classical mechanical system governed by a Hamiltonian and Poisson market. To a, quantum, to a quantum system. Okay, but then, uh, then the, uh, um, another, what, uh, another important step was provided by Schwinger, another character in our story, another well known character in our story, <coughs> who formulated a, a, a variational action principle. So, in if you suppose that you represent, I will be more precise in a moment, S, the action of the system, and if you 
um, if you look at the amplitude, the amplitude you have an initial state B, a final state A, and you look at the amplitude, such as the square of the modulus of that will represent the probability, then uh, if you have if you would, if, if your action depends on parameters and you apply calculus of variation, so S will become S plus delta S, an infinitely small variation. You know, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to do this, infinitely small. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my master who I <laughs> Delta, so the corresponding variation for the amplitude is given very simply, first order, by I over H bar. Delta S B. So it's important to look at this formula. It just says that it's you have to average, suppose A is the same as B, so you observe in a certain state. You have delta S average, average, not a change of action, just average, average over the system. Okay, that's that's the basic principle. And uh, out of that, well, you will see that the Feynman pass integral follows formally from that. Okay. Now, I have to explain what, what, do you, what do you mean by action in this case. There are basically two cases, particle physics and field physics, particle and field. The work of Feynman, his thesis, his PhD in Princeton 42, was concerned, was uh, dealt with the particle physics. And I will explain that in a moment. And, but of course, he uh, it, it dealt that in 42, Feynman. But in 46, at the beginning of renormalization theory, when he was at Yale at the moment, then he realized that by doing for fields what he had done, for particles in his thesis, he could propose it for he could make forward a big great progress. And but also he had to supplement this by Feynman diagrams. The Feynman interval are not so interesting unless particularly unless you derive from them the Feynman diagram. But the point is that even if you had a if you had a rigorous theory of Feynman pass integral or some of the history, when you do the expansion with respect to some parameter, to the, to the, coupling, parameter, to the coupling constant, nothing guarantees that, uh, that, the, that the series will converge. So it's perturbative field field. But what I, what I would like to show, to convince you, is that to, for, at the perturbative level, the rule we give, which is just, I mean, uh, a straightening of the form of, of what everything, everyone does, provide a good transition from a formal pass integral to something, an evaluation of integral connected with, with the Feynman diagram, which is that rigorous, provided you accept the normalization, which is another subject, <laughs> another subject. So, okay. <coughs> and, okay, so now, what uh, can I do? Uh, what is the act? So, we have a particle with mass m, with we describe a certain pass, so they go x of t, which is they go in the Euclidean space R3, depending on the time, t, and the velocity is, of course, x dot, velocity, derivative with respect to x. And then the action is, of course, the action is one half the mass, the square of the length of the velocity, minus v of x. And V is a potential. Okay. The point is that in the action you have two parts. You have two parts. And uh, if you have, if you want to look at the symmetry, dynamical symmetry, so this is uh, Lagrange. This is Lagrangian, and the action of the action is the integral of m t t from an initial time t i to a final time t f. And this s should be considered, this S will be considered as depending on the path. So X, X is a full path, I mean, to a function, which, the curve, if you want, the curve, which 
the full ball which means a complete act of Tn. So x is a function. It's a, it's a, it's a function, and that means it's a number depending on a function. And that's the integral. So okay. L should be more precisely written as a function of six variable, L x dot, and this should be more precisely S of x. So x is L x. Each time you specify a trajectory, whether well, it's a reactor trajectory or not, or, 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 a fixture of trajectory, then you can calculate the corresponding action. And the principle, a uh, classical principle of action is that Ts is zero. Compared to that which is a finite, there is a trigger. So this is, of course, I don't have to repeat it. Uh, this is well known in classical mechanics, except that uh, in one of our most famous schools, Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, this is not part of the standard curriculum. <laughs> and uh, Hamilton equations are unknown to the average student. Mm -hmm. I've been a professor there and probably many times. <laughs> okay. So let's. Uh, what do we have? Well, for field, field theory, what we have is that now we have a field, which is a function simplified in x and t, and uh, I will use standard notation, x0 for ct, and x1, x2, x3 for the space coordinates, so I will consider this as a function of f1. Fx in of x is in the Minkowski space is of R C plus one of four dimension. So it's a function, the field is a function in this, and now instead of the action will be an integral not over, over, over time, but over the whole Minkowski space. And what you have in for instance, we have two good half is that you have a gradient and uh, Lagrangian should be like square of the gradient plus minus m squared phi squared or well, it depends where you put where you put uh, m, m squared c squared often every one of each okay so that's a Lagrangian depending on the function in four that in four variable and what you have so this is a Lagrangian and what you do you integrate over the whole of all the mean coefficients for that picture, f of phi of x d for x for any given function phi, phi of x. So, and that's the action, s of phi, at... Don't you need a time derivative? If no, no, here I include the, the, the four-dimensional gradient. Okay, so, but then the absolute value doesn't mean it's positive. Oh, uh, uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, and then you have, of course, <coughs> the, the, the variation of principle that I see will give you the klein gordon equation as we do. Okay, so here we get the classical motion, and we get the klein gordon equation, and that's exactly what we want by variation of principle. Now, we are, we are to make the transition between the between the classical mechanics, either particle or field, to a quantum mechanics. And as we know, there are many methods, and the, the most classical method is the Schrodinger equation. Schrodinger equation. Schrodinger equation, which was written by Schrodinger, and uh, it, it has to be admitted that it was a a very fortunate guess, but the foundation, that not, mm -hmm. not, not, okay. But Schrodinger, Schrodinger made it, made this guess approximately at the same time as what you, you know, in 1926, there were two or three people to invent at the same time various forms of quantum mechanics, but they all agree as we know now. So Schrodinger equation is, of course, as you know, 
height in the bar gt of uh, the function of psi, psi of t, three dimensional vector, is minus i squared over 2m delta. This now is a Laplace vector in three dimension, psi of x, and minus uh, plus, plus v x, psi x. So that's the Schrodinger equation. You don't have to, you know what this. Okay, now uh, the point is to study, is to study the solution of this. And uh, what, is, uh, what is important to make the transition to Feynman is a so-called interaction picture, which is not so relevant when you do deal with particles, but which is really relevant when you do field, but field theory of quantum theory of field, because it, it guarantees the invariance of the law and both automatically. Other approaches uh, do not do it. Okay, so what you have is that in general you have a you have a, a, a training equation of the type E to the bar psi is H0 plus V psi of of psi of H. The Hamiltonian is the sum of two I mean, two sub Hamiltonian, where the first part is minus h square over two m delta, and the second part is v. Okay. <coughs> and then you have sometimes you have a parameter lambda in the coupling constant. Okay, so we want to, to solve this equation, and the point is that you first you first define so it is it is known that psi of t psi Attack t will be u of t psi of uh, time zero. And u of t is the uh, numerator, which is the exponential, exponential of uh, minus i over h, h, t, h, zero plus t. t. So, provided you know how to calculate the exponential of a numerator, which is not that easy. But then, in many cases, you, what you can do, u0 of t, u0 of t is the same, but with v omitted. And that's, of course, a propagator, that's a propagator for a free, for a free particle or free field. V denotes the interaction of your system, free low particle, with the outside system. Okay, so you have v0 of t, which is a free. And then what you do, you replace you replace psi of t by, by let's say call it uh, psi interaction of t, which is u zero of magnitude t inverse psi uh, psi of t of psi. So that means interaction. That means you Imagine that psi started with the same initial condition, same initial condition, but was developing according to only H0, the free Hamilton, not the interaction. And then it's a simple exercise, it's a simple exercise to write what is, uh, what is the differential equation for this U. So it's minus H psi interaction of T. Now it's equal to uh, uh, v, v lambda v, v interaction of t psi of interaction of t. And, 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 and the definition of psi interaction, you have u zero and psi zero. Uh, uh, okay, you start what? No, you start at psi at time t. No, no, it's not that. Psi at t, psi at t, t, sorry. Initial, or initial, well, initial, what, psi zero. Right. Psi zero. Right. No, it should be t. Should be t, t. Otherwise, yeah. you have to write it. Uh, should be from psi at t. Psi at t. Ah, right, that's yes. Psi at t. Yes, all right. Yes, all right. Yeah. You let evolve psi according to the free motion from time zero to time t, and you bring it back. Oh, maybe you want really? psi zero there, then no, you no, want no, 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 there. No, 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 well, uh, maybe I'm not sure. But they can't be the same. No, 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 okay. no, no, 
you want. You take the full development, you take the full development, and you bring it back at you. And in the next equation, you forgot to write the time derivative. When to take the time derivative? Uh, you know, the, the, right. the last equation. Oh, oh yes, yeah, I'm sorry. So the point is that you started with, well, you can fix the small details. You started from a differential equation which is time invariant, but which has a return uh, two part. Now you can save, you can replace it by, 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 by a differential equation which is variant time. The, now this variant time, this variant time, but you get rid of H. So it's interaction because only the interaction takes the whole. So now the, the contribution of Dyson, Dyson exponential, Dyson, proves the following. So in general, so if you have a general equation, let's say uh, f, uh, g, g, t, f, d, t, f is uh, a, t, f, well, d, t, f of f, t, a, t, f, f, t. So I write it in operator form, and uh, the solution, the solution is obtained as follows: is f of t is a sum from n zero to infinity of an inter of an n fold integral. I will be writing a t one a t n a t n f <coughs> initial value zero, and the integral is over the, the domain where uh, where was it? Uh, zero smaller than Tn, smaller, etc., than T1, which is smaller than T. So you have an n fold integral, n fold integral over a domain. Uh, and it's so called, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, the, the point is that the times that you are here are oriented in some way, are arranged in some way. So this is, uh, this is the so called Feynman's Dyson. Time order integral. Exponential, sorry. Because the trick is to rearrange how to make a, how to make an exponential of that. Well, you first write exponential of integral from zero to t uh, zero to t a s d s. Then you develop this, you develop this. You develop this, and then you put a t, which means the following. You first develop it exponential, as usual, sum, or one, one over n factorial, I mean integral, a, I change the sign where s1, dsn, ds1, dsn, dsn. But now there is no restriction. Every variable goes from 0 to t, independently. And then what you say is that when you apply the T operator, you take this product and you rearrange it in such a way that uh, it's, uh, it's in the following order. The first, the first factor which appears on the left corresponds to the, to the first time S1, to, to the second time S1. And then you have to assume that uh, 0 is smaller than Sn uh, is smaller than S. And why do you, how do you get rid of the one factorial? Because of factorial and possibility of arranging a, a set of num n number according to the model, that just permutation. And instead of, and then <coughs> at least you can say, instead of integrating in n equal to integrating over a square, you divide the square into two times. Okay. That's it. And so that's it. But then it, it, it's, it was the way was the way it was the way the dubious method of Feynman were reformulated in a rigorous way by Dyson. And this this formula is a fantastic formula. Of course it was not known before, but it it has now of course uh, everyone uses it okay? in combinatorics especially it's, it's, it's a very very useful. So now what comes after that? Do you need to say what the interaction of T is over there? Yes, it, it, has, it, it has to be, well, 